Choosing Life by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 38. I'm sorry. What? I wish I could give you some other news, Lady Uma, the doctor said as Uma clenched Harry's hand as another contraction racked her body. But unfortunately, as you've elected to have a water bath, it's not possible to implement an epidural while in the water. It's been over 20 years since Orodon was found it. And you're telling me the geniuses here have figured out a way to make it so epidurals can be used doing water baths. Remember, cuz, Apollo is the god of medicine, Mal said as she gently held Uma's other hand. Normally, it would just be the expectant father in the room, but the doctors weren't about to argue with the High Queen of Oradon or her mother. Oh, that son probably melted his brains, so all he can do is focus on poetry. Make sense to me! Uma groaned as another contraction hit her body, and she squeezed Harry's hand once more. We have been experimenting with Lady Aletheia, the doctor said, combining morphine with nectar to provide some relief to those of her divine lineage who choose to have a water bath since it doesn't seem fair to have both of you in pain. Of course, we'll need your approval, and Lord Harry's approval, to administer it, if you're interested in seeing if it works. Please. I I grew up on the aisle. I'm not taking any pain meds. Uma said, still panting rather hard, as she tried to catch her bearings. All the women of the aisle did this for years without pain meds. If it's not an option for me, then I don't want special treatment. Very well, Lady Uma. The doctor nodded but Mal frowned as she caught a glimpse of Harry's face. It was clear he had tried to hide it, but most, if not all, of the colour had gone from his cheeks. And if Mal was honest, she wasn't sure Harry's knuckles being white was due to Uma's grip on Harry's hand, or Harry's grip on hers. Hey, Mum, you might want to talk to Harry, Uma thought to Persephone. At least get him some fresh air or something. He looks ready to pass out. Persephone glanced over at Harry and frowned slightly. She saw her daughter wasn't far off. Harry, come with me. Let's go get a bit of fresh air, Persephone said, trying to keep her voice gentle for the former pirate. But, uh, Lady Steph, I promise Uma will be just fine. We'll just be in the hall, Persephone said, as she began to lead her surrogate son out of the hall. Wait, where's Harry going? Uma asked as she watched him go out. What's... what's going on? Mal sighed as realisation seemed to hit her as to what was bothering Harry. Cuz, what was it two days ago? CJ's... birthday, Uma said, her voice trailing off as she remembered just what that meant to Harry. Even though he had been only two at the time, some hurts never truly healed for the VKs. Meanwhile, out in the hall, Persephone gently rested a hand on Harry's shoulder as she sat him down on a nearby bench. Take your time, Harry. It's okay, she said, making sure to keep her voice as gentle as possible. No, no, I'm fine, Harry said, shaking his head. I, I want to be in there. I can't leave her. Not now. You're not going to be of any use to Uma if you're panicking or having flashbacks, Harry, Persephone said, gently yet firmly pushing Harry back onto the bench. As I said, just take a minute. I know it's scary. Believe me. Harry shook his head once more and looked up at Persephone, worry clearly visible in the man's blue eyes. I, I can't lose her, Lady Steph. Please, I have to be with her. Harry, Uma is in the best place she could be to have this baby, Persephone told him, still keeping her voice as gentle as possible. It's not like the aisle, but right now you have to focus on you. Harry bit his lip, glancing between Persephone and the door to Uma's birthing suite. Persephone didn't mind the silence. She had been in Harry's life so long, she knew it was better not to press him. The caves didn't do well when they were felt pressured, after all. I... 
I can still hear my mum screaming. I'm... Harry whispered. I know it doesn't make sense since I was two, but I can. I can hear her screaming when she gave birth to CJ. I am seeing the pain in Uma's eyes and knowing she is like that because of me. Harry, I'm going to stop you right there, Persephone said firmly. Uma is not in pain because of you. Unless you're trying to tell me Uma didn't have a choice in the matter. No, of course not! Then this was Uma's choice, Harry. She was prepared for this moment to happen when she got pregnant. Harry shook his head, though. It's... it's still my fault, though. It takes two. Harry, James, you listen to me, Persephone said, keeping her voice gentle yet firm and trying to hide the way her heart broke hearing Harry's whispers. Yes, Uma is in pain. But trust me, that pain is temporary, and she will forget all about it when your baby is laid in her arms. But the last thing Uma wants is to see you in pain. Persephone sighed softly as she saw the doubt in Harry's eyes, and gently brushed some of the hair out of his eyes, before pointing to a ring Harry wore on a chain around his neck. I know the only birth you've been through before this is one that ended in tragedy. But, Harry, trust me when I say that is not in the cards for Uma. Has she ever been someone to break a promise? Harry shook his head, his hand going to the ring. Uma had gifted it to him before she left on her first trading route. It was a simple ring, but what mattered the most to Harry was the engraving inside it. All my maps lead to you. It was Uma's way of telling him that she would always come back, no matter what. And it was silly, but the closer they got to Uma's due date, the more Harry had begun to wear the chain with the ring. Almost as if he was trying to prevent the fate that befell his mother from befalling Uma as well. How... How are you so sure? Oh... How can you be so sure, Lady Steph? Harry asked, his voice soft. Because, first of all, you and I both know Hades is watching her lifeline like a hawk right now. And two, this is not the Isle, Persephone told him. They're prepared for anything that looks like it's going to go wrong, just like they were for Mal. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, Harry? Uma's going to give birth. And you're going to hold your child in your arms. And this will just be a passing memory. Persephone said gently. One look at your child's face. And everything you went through to get them here will be all worth it. Okay? Okay, Mum. Harry said softly before pausing, his eyes growing wide. I... I didn't mean... Harry, you know I think of you as a son. Persephone said with a small smile. That will never change. No matter if you're a nine-year-old boy or a man about to become a father. But if you're not comfortable calling me that, I understand. I know how much you loved your mother and I would never want to replace her for you. But for Olympus's sake, stop using my title. Okay? Okay, Harry said with a small chuckle. I'm sorry to interrupt, my lady, but Lady Uma is asking for Lord Harry, one of the nurses said, poking their head out of the door to the birthing suite. The baby's coming. Before either woman could blink, Harry was on his feet and making his way through the door to be by his wife's side, all fear forgotten as he rushed into the room. Though Persephone couldn't help but notice that Uma seemed to be much less in pain than she was when Harry took his breather. She didn't want Harry to be in pain, Uma thought. Mal thought to Persephone, thankfully providing the explanation Persephone was looking for. She took the pain medication. Didn't the doctors say they also needed Harry's approval? Uma might have splashed one of the nurses with water from the bathing tub when they said they would go and ask Harry. She didn't want to worry Harry and make him think something was wrong. I am so sorry. Persephone heard Uma. 
Persephone heard Harry whisper to Uma as he crouched to take Uma's hand. I get it, even if Mo had to give me a gentle nudge in the right direction. And I'm so sorry about that, Uma told him, resting her forehead against his shoulder before squeezing his hand. I, I was going to ask for Harriet to come for you, if, if Aunt Steph hadn't helped you. Don't worry about that now, darling. You just focus on you. I can multitask, Harry, Uma said with a soft smile. Harry shook his head before kissing hers. No, right now you don't. Right now you focus on our child. Is the water warm enough? Um, I'm fine, Harry, Uma said, groaning slightly as another contraction hit. Even with the pain relief, she could still feel the pain, though it wasn't as bad as it had been before. Okay, Harry said, his voice soft as he gently squeezed his, her hand and smiled as Uma squeezed his back. You're doing well, Uma, Persephone said. You really are, the doctor nodded. Everything's going smoothly. I don't know if that's normal or if they're saying that for my sake. Harry thought. He knew he'd likely have to do a lot to be able to show his face in hospitals without the doctors, knowing him as the guy who freaked out as his wife was giving birth. Still, it was nice to know that there were no surprises. Uma bit her lip trying to keep quiet, even as the strain of labour was evident on her face. She didn't want to put Harry through that again. I got you, Pers, Mal thought to her with a small smile. Trust me, I am very familiar with the whole trying not to be the typical screaming wife in labour routine. I mean, you went through it yourself, Uma thought back. Besides, Harry feels guilty enough without me screaming. The pain meds were good, but... God, I can't wait for this to be over. And I don't want him feeling bad. Not today. I want December to finally be a happy month for Harry. Mel nodded slightly. She completely understood where Uma was coming from. You got this, cuz. She thought, if anyone can do it, you can. If this doctor calls me lady one more time, I'm going to kick him and make it look like an accident. Why does that not surprise me? I made it, Molly. One more big push, Lady Uma, the doctor exclaimed, and Uma was so startled she forgot to kick him as promised. There we go. It's a girl. A girl? We have a daughter, Harry asked with a smile. I guess you were right, Uma said, giving him a tired smile as she leaned back. I guess so, Harry smiled, as the doctors cleaned their daughter off wrapping her in a nearby towel, and then gently placing her in Harry's arms. Hello, lassie. I'm your papa. Harry managed to tear his eye. Harry managed to tear his eyes away from his precious little girl to give Uma a grin. She looks like you. Gimme, Uma chuckled, giving Harry a soft smile. Harry chuckled as he gently placed their daughter in Uma's arms. Uma smiled as she looked down at her little girl. You're right. I mean, there are a few differences, but there are more similarities than differences. You've got some strong genes there, Uma, Mal said as she looked at Uma's daughter. Looks like her hair's going to look like her mama's. I guess Benny and I could form a club, since your daughter looks so much like him, Uma said, joking with Mal. I guess you could, Mal chuckled. She's perfect. Yeah, she is, Harry said, his voice soft as he looked down at his daughter. She's absolutely perfect. What are you going to name her? Persephone asked. Helena, Uma told her. Helena Harriet Hook. Mal couldn't help but smile at that. I'm sure Harriet would be honoured to be part of such a beautiful name. She said, I'm sure you're right, Harry said. It was the least I could do for her, after everything Harriet did for me. I'm just glad it suits her because we didn't have a backup, Emma added with a chuckle. We could have named her after one of your sisters, Harry offered. Maybe, Emma nodded. Harry smiled and gently kissed Emma's head. I'll go let Harriet, Freddy, Ali, Sammy, Celia and CJ know she's here. He said, I'm sure they'll still be out in the lobby. 
Cyrus and Ryan had opted to stay behind for the first meeting, claiming they would just overcrowd the room and cause a safety issue. Harry, though, thought they just didn't want to be alone with Freddie and Harriet for possibly hours and potentially be interrogated as to the direction of their relationships with Celia and CJ. Thanks, Uma said with a small smile as she continued to gaze at her daughter. No thanks needed, Harry said. You're just rest, darling. You're more than earned it. I'll be right back. I promise. Take your time, Harry. We're not going anywhere, Uma said, and Helena cooed softly, as if agreeing with Uma. Harry couldn't help but smile as he heard that before heading out. His daughter was here. He was a papa now. Harriet looked over at him as Harry walked into the waiting room quickly, getting to her feet and hurrying over to him. Harry, what's going on? Are they okay? Everything's fine. Harry said with a smile. You want to go and meet your niece? It's a girl? Harriet asked with a grin as she processed what her brother had said. Harry smiled. Well, I'd prefer it if you didn't call my daughter in it. Yep. I've got a daughter. Her name's Helena. Helena Harriet Hook. Harry, Harriet said softly. I'm honoured. You didn't have to. I mean, I'm sure you had other name options. None will suit her more than the name she has, Harriet said. Come on, auntie. Come and meet your niece. Ahem, CJ said, clearing her throat playfully. Forgetting someone. Harry got on help but smile. It truly was a mark of how much their relationship had grown and flourished since the two of them came to Oridon, that they could tease each other rather than being at the point of contention between the two. Chop, chop then, Siege, Harry said, the grin never leaving his face before looking over at his sisters-in-law. Freddy, Celia, Sammy, are you guys coming as well? I'll stay here for now, Harry, Sammy said. Better to not crowd the new arrival right off the bat. But congrats. Thanks, Sammy, Harriet said. We'll make sure you and Harriet come over once Uma's home, so you can meet Helena. I look forward to it, Sammy grinned. Great, Harry, Harry said, returning the grin before turning and leading the group back down the hallway. As he watched the others fawn over his daughter, Harry had to wonder how he had ever pictured a future without Uma or Helena in it. Trust me, I've been there. Mal said, walking over to Harry to give him a bit of breathing room. What? How? What do you? It's clear as day on your face, Harry. Plus, I've practically known you my whole life. Mal shook her head. There's days when I look at the twins, and I find myself thinking, how did I ever imagine a world where you wouldn't be in it? Because it's such a foreign concept to me now. The kids. They don't have to fight for resources. They don't have to pick sides and hope they choose the right gang. They... They can just be and leave the worrying to us. She is going to be a little heartbreaker, isn't she? Harry heard CJ chuckle. Oi, who said she's dating? Harry said. Mal shook her head. Not even a papa for a day and he's already overprotective. She snorted. And I wouldn't have him any other way. Uma said, giving Harry a soft smile. That was the truth, after all. Even though she complained about his hovering during the pregnancy, Uma knew that the protectiveness was just Harry being the man she loved. Feelings mutual, love. Harry smiled. Life might not have been fair to the VKs growing up, but it felt like the universe was finally starting to make amends by giving them the lives they could only ever have dreamed of. And Harry couldn't wait to see where life took him next. End of chapter. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, yay. Little Helen is here. I'm loving all this baby stuff. Jenny, you are brilliant at this. And oh, my God, Harry calling for Stephanie mum, even if it's just once. Oh, my heart. I know they felt like parents to him ever since chapter 27 of Choosing Family. So, about time. Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, girls, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.